In meditation, go deep in the heart. In dealing with others, be gentle and kind. In speech, be true. In ruling, be just. In daily life, be competent. In action, be aware of the time and the seasons. No fight, no blame. Spiritual well-being has many facets. Put succinctly, it is the ability to experience and integrate within your life practices that bring you meaning and purpose. Spiritual well-being is brought about by deliberately connecting with a higher power, one's self, other people, art, music, nature, and other forms of personal expression. Is it possible to be a spiritual legal professional? Perhaps the realm of one's spirit is best left to philosophy and theology. However, if the spirit is part of you, then attending to it daily is best accomplished by the one who knows it well, by you. So I feel like I have two sides to myself and I've done a lot of self-reflection on this topic. I have this very spiritual side of myself, almost like a mystical side, and I have a very type A lawyer side, which I'm sure many of you can relate to. And they used to be very disconnected from each other. So over the past year, I've been working on bridging the connection between the two sides of myself. And now they finally speak the same language or know how to speak each other's language and can understand each other. Now that these two sides of myself can communicate with each other, I can connect to something larger than myself. And that's what spirituality means to me. Let's face it, law can be quite black and white to the point where it leaves zero room for color. <laughs> and color is how I express myself, especially when I am challenged throughout the workday. So when I am feeling overwhelmed, when I am feeling frustrated, when my head hurts, when I'm tired of the black and white, when I'm tired of providing advice, or when I'm asked a question for the 15th time, I will take a break and I will in just saturate myself with color. So yeah, that is spiritual well-being for me. It's about being and soaking in everything that is around you and what you can express. What calms me down is meditation. And I am so glad that I found this practice late last year because it has profoundly changed my life. My quality of life has improved so much that I recommend meditation to anyone who talks to me about their stress and anxiety. And um, I'm recommending it all the time now because so many people struggle with it. Um, it's definitely worth trying if you struggle to. I started meditating during my first year of law school. So for me, the practice of meditation and the practice of law have always been intertwined. And meditation has been indispensable to me in my legal career. Now, when I'm anxious, focusing on the breath can be difficult. So instead, I'll do a free floating mindfulness practice where I don't try to anchor my attention and I just bring a curious awareness to whatever's arising in the moment even uncomfortable thoughts or sensations, so that I don't become reactive to them. I'm reminded of something my Tibetan teachers often said, short moments, many times. And I think that's a viable way for a busy professional to practice. In what do you believe? What provides you with a sense of purpose? Our spirit recognizes a higher power. We display a spiritual connection through our soul our mind's focus, our will's desires, and our emotional expressions. Like a lot of people, it can be really challenging for me when I face negative feedback. That's where my spiritual well-being comes into play. I'm reminded first and foremost that we all are created in God's image, and I connect to the eternal through scripture reading and through prayer. 
These practices remind me that ultimately it's not about me. It's about my role as a lawyer to serve, help, and care for others. And it's also about my responsibility as a lawyer to be an instrument of joy and peace. And one of the strategies that I was taught involves turning over those problems that we're experiencing and that we just can't get a handle on ourselves, turning it over to our higher power. And that higher power is what we conceptualize it to be. To ask my higher power to lift from my shoulders the things that are troubling me and over which I have no control. And I found that when I'm able to do that, I have more peace in my life, I get along better with other people, and things are just better overall. Sometimes before I submit a brief that I've been working on, I get into the cycles of perfectionism where I'm like, is it good enough? You know, does it contain any mistakes, even though I've reviewed it several times? And when I identify that I'm getting stuck in this cycles, and I notice it, I just pause. I take a very deep breath and I repeat to myself, I did my best and I let go of the rest. And when I can, I also dance. Remember, you are more than the letter of the law, words on a page, a billable hour, a verdict, or a cog in a wheel. You are a being with a spirit to express through a soul. It is possible to be a legal professional who practices spiritual well-being to bring balance to your everyday. What does it look like to practice spiritual well-being? It looks like you.